YouTube. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to part two of the LTZ 400 build. So um, in this video, we're gonna pretty much be picking up where we left off. So for any of you guys that started uh, following my channel because of me posting in the LTZ 400 group, or any of, you, any of my subscribers that are just genuinely interested on the details of this bike and uh, what all went into it, what mods I've done, things like that, Make sure you try to watch this video um, through to the end because there's going to be a section where I pick up the camera and I walk around the bike and I detail or I point out the different things that I've done um, as far as, you know, certain mods and stuff that are out there for these LTZs. And um, I'll try and explain a little bit and give you guys my process and how I got there and things of that nature. Without further ado, we're going to jump into keeping the ball rolling, putting this thing together. And um, yeah, man, so let's get to it.
So I ran into a situation to where when I first got done getting fluid coming through these calipers to where I felt like it was good, I came up here and pulled on the brake and I didn't feel, it felt, still felt a little squishy, didn't feel like it's supposed to feel. So if that, if you go through that and that happens, don't freak out. Just get you a zip tie, zip tie the lever to the handlebar to where the valve is open. And then go ahead and repeat your process and pull fluid through both calipers. And that should tighten you up. Um, there might still be air trapped in here. If you bleed them with this close like I did, um, that should work. And then one thing I always do for good measure, measure is when it feels right, I bleed them the old fashioned way by squeezing on the handle loosen this loosen the bleeder up on one side so the lever goes all the way back if the stream looks good there's no bubbles or air or anything like that you close it let the handle go repeat for the opposite side and now we're good as y'all can see i'm squeezing the, the handle up here you can actually see the caliper squeezing the pads on the rotor see the caliper moving. So we're nice and firm up here. We're bled. Time to do the back. So we're gonna kind of start in the front here and then work our way around this bike. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of uh, pretty much the details on, on you know, the things that I've done to this bike and the parts that are on it. So to start, we have upgraded the front calipers to dual piston uh, YFZ front calipers. Um, this is a common upgrade that people do on the LTZs, especially guys that are racing them. So they'll have a, a little bit of stopping power. Um, I didn't go out of my way to do this upgrade. Um, I ended up purchasing these A-arms off of eBay used. Uh, these are JD Performance Plus 2, Plus 1 A-arms. You guys know I run these on my Banshee as well. I really like these arms and I got super lucky and found this these arms the calipers another set of spindles and um or another set of knuckles spindles whatever you want to call them as well as the front hubs and the whole assembly um i got all of this stuff for like 400 bucks um if you guys you know know about jd performance he hand makes all of his arm and there's usually a wait period uh he does a certain batch for a certain uh, machine throughout different parts of the year. So usually when you order arms, you're gonna have like anywhere from a four week to sometimes an eight week wait, depending on how busy he is. Like I said, these were used on eBay. I got lucky. Um, I bought them, stripped them and coated them. So we have the YFZ calipers, the JD Performance A-arms. These are OEM. Uh, LTZ 400 shocks, resi shocks that come on the 05 or newer models. Um, I just sent these out to Kevin at Jogaka, you guys know. I also had him do my Banshee suspension as well. So sent those out to Kevin at Jogaka just to have them freshened up. I didn't have them, I didn't change the spring rates or, or get them revived or anything like that. Just a basic rebuild and freshen up um, to kind of save um, this, you got, this is a budget bike, um, so I tried to save, save money where I could. Um, I have American Star stainless braided lines, front and rear. On this bike, we have an Alba Plus 2 steering stem. Um, I have one of these on the Banshee as well. Uh... 
we have a YFZ front master cylinder, ASV breakaway levers, uh, a Honda uh, thumb throttle off of, uh, this one was for a TRX 450, but this is just a generic uh, eBay one for like 30 bucks. They work just fine. I put one on my Banshee as well. Uh, we have the Renthal Fat Bar CR High Bin. I love the CR High Bin. Um, that's what I run on all my stuff. So that's what we went with. Um, excuse the background, guys. It's a little messy in here. But after I get done this thing, we'll organize. So as far as the motor, I'm pretty sure I've said it in uh, the other videos. But this is a stroked a, a big bore and a stroke motor. It has a four millimeter hot rods crank in it. And it has a 434 big bore kit on it. So with the big bore kit and the stroker crank, it equals out to be a 460, I wanna believe, or a 462 cc engine. Um, so something that we did to support the bore and the stroking of the motor is we upgraded to a FCR carburetor. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can put an FCR on these bikes. Um, you can upgrade to an FCR carburetor if you have a stock motor. It's worth the money, um, or so everyone says. I've ridden a stock Z400. I'm waiting to ride this thing and you know try to compare the two and see what the difference is. But as far as everybody that's done this upgrade and everybody that recommends this upgrade is well worth the money. Um, it makes the throttle response and everything on these bikes night and day. So this is a FCR off of a KTM 530. Um, the reason why I got this one is because I got it pretty cheap. Um, if you're going to do an FCR swap, I recommend getting an FCR that's already that's made or that was made for a four-wheeler because they have this part of the carburetor that's uh you know built for the single um throttle cable the dirt bikes have two cables coming out of their throttle one will go at the top and the other one will go at the bottom and the four wheelers only have one cable so i'm gonna have to probably just stick a bolt in here with some silicone or something to seal that up to just make sure water doesn't get down in there but yeah, we got this off of eBay. I think it was like 200 bucks I paid for it. And then I bought a complete rebuild kit for it. And this adapter here. So with all the parts and stuff and this adapter, I think I'm into this thing like maybe uh, 300 bucks, 325 bucks, something like that. Um, and it's pretty much like brand new, tore it all apart, replaced the mid body, all the gaskets, anything that was bad, vapor blasted it put this adapter on here. So this adapter is from a uh, NOS machine and Chuck Marlin in the LTZ 400 groups actually recommended this adapter because of the transition it has on it. It's not just a like transition with a sharp edge, it's beveled. Um, this is another thing. So this is what I mean by the it being beveled and that's to help promote airflow. Um, this is another supporting mod for the motor and the carburetor. This is a Sparks Racing. They call it a supercharger uh, air filter kit, but all it is basically is a is a flange, a three inch filter flange, so you can run a way bigger filter. And this, this with this setup here, it'll breathe a lot better. Um, inadvertently, when I first did this upgrade, the I had the air box back here before I modded the air box and the uh, stock boot wasn't quite long enough to connect the carburetor. So I was trying to figure out how I was gonna do that. And um, once I modded the air box and put this flange on here, as you guys can see that flange, uh, you know, ex is, it extends off the air box a good ways from stock. That gave me most of what I needed to get this boot to fit this setup. Um, I tried a 400EX boot at first because that's another common thing that people do is they run a 400EX boot 
but that ended up not really working for me so great. So this works good. I just had to stretch it a little bit, not much at all to get it to work. And I also had to take a Dremel and there's like a lip on the inside of this boot here or a lip, a stop, whatever you want to call it. But the stock carburetor, this will slide onto the stock carburetor and there's a stop in here to keep the boot from, I don't know, I guess it's to, to uh, reduce this, the inner diameter of the boot down to where it's, you know, equal with the, the diameter of the stock carburetor, the inside. So all I did was take a Dremel and grind that stop out to help this slide on here more because this the, the flange on this adapter is way bigger than the stock carburetor. So that's really the only other thing I had to do was take a Dremel and, and, and grind that little stop out. And I got it to slide on there fine. Um, I have another one of these screws on order because that one's a little chewed up. But yeah, man, as far as supporting mods, um for the motor that's it um another thing that we did do is a ltr rear end swap on here um this is a ltr 450 axle ltr 450 hubs carrier swing arm linkage all of that brake caliper is all from ltr 450. uh this is a common swap or mod or upgrade wherever you want to call it on these bikes because they come with aluminum swing arms and they always crack um so the benefits to running the ltr swing arm is you can do it for you can do this whole conversion if you shop right for cheaper than it would be to order like say a fireball swing arm or an american star swing arm like i got on my banshee like that swing arm from american star was 900 bucks um i think i did this swap for like 400 bucks 450 bucks something like that um with all the parts like i said if you shop you can do it you know you might even be able to do it cheaper if you run across the right guy at the right time it's just trying to get rid of these parts so the last uh supporting mod really for the motor was this uh, Empire exhaust. Um, I was back and forth on a few other exhausts and I was trying to figure out what was going to be the best, you know, pipe to get for this bike. Everyone said Empire is the best you can get for the LTZ 400. Um, so, you know, that's what I went with. Um, or not for the LTZ 400, but for, a, for a big bore motor, they recommended Empire. They didn't say it was the best, but a lot of people recommended Empire. There were some other exhausts that were recommended, but I like Empire the, the best. So I ended up going with them. Uh, it's an Empire full exhaust, header, silencer, yada, yada, yada. Um, pretty happy with this exhaust. It was an expensive exhaust. Um, there was a few things that I weren't absolutely thrilled with, but... Um, when you have handmade stuff, handmade exhaust, you're gonna deal with some flaws. Um, the main thing I wasn't super happy with was the fact that they, you know, you they they recommend, I guess, or whatever, that you hard mount the muffler to the subframe. And I didn't like that deal. Um, you know, most bikes, there's a cushion, some kind of cushion, some kind of rubber bushing. Um, so I ended up, making one out of a, I had a old Honda cushion for a two stroke exhaust and the insert and all that laying around. And um, that's what I stuck in there. So that worked out pretty good. Gave that a little, uh, you know, for things like vibration and things like that, it's, it's a lot better to have that rubber, that rubber uh, cushion in there. So, yeah, that's about it, man. You guys already know everything Cerakoted the covers and all, and OEM radiator, and we powder coated the cage on the fan, cleaned everything up. Um, and that's about it for the mods. Um, OEM, I forgot, there's an OEM rear shock in there as well. All done by Joe Gaka. So, yeah, that's really it for the mods. Those are the specs on the bike. Um, we have the American Star braided rear line as well. 
I think I said that's a OEM LTR 450 rear caliber. Another upgrade people like to do is upgrade this to a YFZ caliber or a dual piston caliper in the back. Um, I don't think it's necessary for me because I'm not going to be really like racing or anything like that. And I didn't want to spend the money. Um, I didn't want to invest in that upgrade. I think this LTR rear caliper will serve me just fine. So, yeah, guys, that's really about it as far as the upgrades and what I've done. Um, you know, for anybody that was wondering or wanted a little bit of information, um, that's about it. So we still have a good bit of work to do. Um, we got to get the graphics on the plastics. I have to make some mounts for the rear plastics as uh, the, the stock ones broke off. That's not really a big deal. Um, I can do that no problem. So uh, part three will probably consist of just that, buttoning this thing up, getting the wheels on it, getting it on the ground, getting the front end aligned and uh, everything tightened up. And then uh, hopefully we'll be able to go on our first rip, man. So yeah, guys, this is enough of me running my mouth. Um, hopefully you got some good information. And uh, we're going to roll the outro. All right, guys. So that's going to be a wrap for part two of the LTZ 400 video. Um, as you guys can see, we're making some good progress on this bike. Um, hopefully part three will be the last part to this series and we'll be wrapping everything up. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing if you like the content. And uh, for my return subscribers, man, you guys already know, I appreciate you guys for coming back, watching the videos, hitting that like button. And those of you that drop a comment, man, appreciate you guys as well. Um, if any of y'all have any questions, I'm a, I'll do my best to try and answer your questions. Um, but a lot of the times you guys ask me questions and um, I go over or explain whatever you're asking me in the video. So I know it can be kind of boring listening to somebody talk, yada, yada, yada. But if you want answers to your questions and you want to learn how to do this stuff, guys, just watch the videos, man. I drop a lot of jewels. I, I give a lot of free game. Um, but as always, man, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all boys in the next one. Oh, got to do it with this hand. Catch y'all boys in the next one. Peace.